chapter 18. The two men walked in front of the stage and pretended to dig a hole. They were grave diggers. Pip realised doing the job in a churchyard. Of course, they couldn't really dig through the stage. It was made of wood. People walked on it. And yet, like magic, one of the grave diggers reached down into the floor as if they were putting his arm into the hole and pulled out a white skull. A few people applauded the trick. The grave digger nodded, thanking them, then tossed the skull in the air and caught it. Most of the actors were tall and handsome, but the grave digger was short, plump and startling ugly. He had a bald head, bushy eyebrows and a shiny red nose. Just looking at him made Pip want to laugh. The grave digger held the skull at the same height as his face and chatted to it as if he was talking to an old friend. He had only spoken a few words when an apple flew through the air and smacked him in the forehead. For a moment, the grave digger was too surprised to do anything. Then he turned his head slowly and stared at the audience. He said, who did that? No one answered. Come on, said the grave digger. Who did that? The crowd was quiet. It'll be better if everyone, if you just tell me, said the grave digger. Who threw that apple? shouted someone. Who cares? Not me, yelled someone else. I do, said the grave digger. I'm an actor, a serious actor. You can't throw fruit at me. Come on, own up. Who threw the apple? People in the galleries started slow clapping, jeering, whistling, and catcalls went round the globe. Someone shouted, do your job, say something funny. The grave digger wasn't in the mood for jokes. He was furious. Holding the skull in his right hand, he picked up an apple in his left and said, I'm asking you for the last time, who threw that? Me, shouted a voice. No, me, shouted another voice. From all around the globe, more and more voices joined in. Me, it was me. No, me, me, I threw it. Over here, me. The grave digger stared at the crowd, his anger intensified by his confusion. He wavered, turning his head from side to side, unsure what to do until the decision was made for him. Another apple flew through the air and hit him on the nose, exploding with a loud crack that could be heard all around the globe. Yelling with pain and fury, the grave digger turned and using all his strength, but without aiming or really looking, hurling the skull into the audience. The skull whirled through the air, heading directly towards a red-faced, broad-shouldered man in a white shirt. His name was Dominic Cleaver, and he was one of the most best Dutchers in London. Once a week, Dominic Cleaver left his butcher's shop in the hands of his apprentice, exchanged his bloody apron for a clean white shirt and went to the theatre. He had never been to any other country. In fact, he'd never ventured more than a few miles from London and then only to visit the farmers who provided his chickens, beef and mutton. But over the years, actors had transported him to Italy, Russia and dozens of other countries that he would have never had a chance to visit himself. He had seen births, battles, weddings, massacres. He had followed the careers of kings and generals. He had eavesdropped on arguments between veteran merchants witnessed by fury of Turkish emperors and followed a rabble running riot through the street of Rome. But he'd never been hit in the head with a human skull. Until today. The skull bounced off Dominic Nick Cleaver's face. A couple of teeth threw, flew through the air. One belonged to Dominic Cleaver and the other belonged to the skull. But neither was but neither was ever seen again. The two teeth dropped to the ground and were lost in the mud. Up to that moment, Dominic Cleaver had simply been enjoying the play. He hadn't thrown an apple. He didn't even shout. But this was different. He turned around and punched whoever was unlucky enough to be standing next to him. Within seconds, fights had broken out in every part of the globe. Men pulled daggers from their belts, steel flashes from the sunlight, 
fists flew, voices screamed, actors jumped off stage and joined in. Pip would have been happy to fight in a duel with anyone who had insulted him or his family. But he didn't want to hurt someone who'd never done anything to him or harmed him. So he stayed calm and quiet as possible, avoiding fists and feet, leaving his knife in his scabbard, standing in one place and waiting for the fight to finish. His patience didn't last long. When an elbow smacked into the side of his head, swiftly followed by a boot that thudded into his shin, he decided that he'd had enough. It's no fun standing while people hit you. He pushed through the crowd, protecting his head with his hands and tried to find a way out. Instead, he found an empty nook under the galleries, just big enough to fit a bag of costumes and a box of props or a small boy. There he took shelter for the fight. No one followed him inside or even noticed where he'd gone. They were all too busy slapping, punching, kicking one another. Foot sore, half starved and completely exhausted. Pip lay down, closed his eyes and drifted into a deep dreamless sleep.